we know that Manston was uh, bringing 14 and 15 year old runaway girls and having sex with them. But every a couple of times in the family, the book by Ed Sanders, he mentions going to the ranch and seeing 10 to 12 year old girls who they sort of kept in the back, and, and those 10 to 12 year old girls were, were taught to run away immediately as soon as anybody came on the premises. Well, if he's bringing some of them to the party, you can see how uh, very quickly you can gain control over um, you know a large segment of the. Um, Sort of entertainment industry. Uh, and blackmail is Whatever a good. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we know the CIA is, is, is engaged in that sort of thing as well. They've operated safe houses where they were doing similar stuff. So, uh, so all that going on. So I started paying attention to uh, celebrity culture and wondering, well, you know, you've got Scientology overtly penetrating celebrity culture. Tom Cruise is, uh, you know, fairly powerful celebrity. Um, John Travolta, somewhat so, uh, and I have no idea who else, you know, Will Smith is now sort of in that orbit, and uh, a lot of people won't criticize Tom Cruise, and uh, um, so what's the agenda there? And, uh, and I'm not really sure, um, other than to just expose people to the Church of Scientology, if there's another agenda at work or not, but, but they're definitely making those inroads, um, which brings us to Britney Spears, who is not a Scientologist. And the only thing I want to say about that is, is I just want people to uh, uh, see through it if this turns out to be a time where Scientology is going to swoop in and save her. I hope right. that's not what's going on here. Yeah, but, it's a strange uh, phenomenon that we're seeing here lately are these uh, very public, spectacular meltdowns of these starlets. Uh, there was yeah, Anna well, Nicole Smith think, and questions raised. Yeah, Anna Nicole Smith. Uh, if you find that video of her in a clown suit, um, you can read, and I'm not going to get into the personal stuff. I have another view, uh, another blog attached to my blog where I go into some of the personal stuff that my wife has been through. And she's VIB, formerly called multiple personality. I'm really familiar with it. I know what it looks like. Um, I know what it's like to be with someone whose system is sort of falling apart. And I also know what it's like to be with someone whose system is functioning, but they still have alters. Um, I, you know, so I'm very familiar with it, and uh, it gets you know, when Hollywood gets a hold of this stuff, I just cringe. And when people were speculating about Britney Spears, I cringe. But I looked at that video of Anna Nicole Smith when she had that clown makeup on. I'm sorry, I don't have a link to hand that I can give people. And I swear that looked to me like a child alter. It really, really did. She could have just been drugged, but it sure looked familiar to me. Um, I don't know what that means. I didn't pay that much attention. But then Britney Spears comes along, and, you know... I have this theory that there are people who are under control who maybe can't speak out, but maybe they're finding way to, ways to speak out. And maybe there's an element of what Britney Spears is doing that's not just about getting attention for herself. This business of adopting the British accent. Maybe she's really multiple personality. That's what some of the media are saying. Um, maybe she just uh, is pretending to be to draw attention to something else. But if you look at it, um, and I just found a link, and uh, rather than try to give this whole link, I'm just going to suggest that people can go to my web at dreamsinweb.com, and there you can click on the forum. And we have a, a Britney Spears thread, which just, I never thought would happen with me. <laughs> um, and at the, towards the very end of it, uh, one of my readers just put up a link to a smoking gun article, which is an affidavit um, by Britney's parents. And what they're saying uh, is just, phenomenal. There's this guy, Sam Lufty. I don't know anything about this. I swear I can name three songs Britney Spears has sung in her life. I don't know, you know, I don't claim to know anything about it. But let me just read you this one passage. Sam told Jackie and me that he grinds up Britney's pills, which were on the counter and included Risperdal and Seroquel. He told us that he puts them in her food and that that was the reason she'd been quiet for the last uh, three days. He told us that the doctor who is treating her now is trying to get her into a sleep-induced coma so that they can give her drugs to heal her brain. And this whole thing is an affidavit by Britney's parents, who I don't know anything about, and given her life, you know, they may not have been very good parents at all. But the whole affidavit is how this guy, Sam Lusty, got complete control of her. Now, this starts to very much resemble uh, the very much misinformation-laden uh, Project Monarch kind of thing. Uh, that is, she seems to have a handler. Um, she's going out now in different wigs, but I noticed that when she had the blonde wig, for example, when she was trying to make her comeback dance on the MTV Awards, she couldn't do it. 
And then she did a vid video where she's got the black wig on, and she can dance, but in that same video, she's got herself in the blonde wig looking at herself in the black wig. Yeah, the, the she's going double around using. Theme. Yeah, so, and I'm, I'm running into that uh, thematically in, in other places. Uh, in a weird place, Hannah Montana, I don't know anything about her. She lives here in Nashville, actually, I guess in Franklin. And she um, is being hot like crazy. Uh, it was front well, page and news she here in, in real life has the black hair or the brunette, and then she's got the blonde hair when she's Hannah Montana. And um, uh, so, and then there was a, a kid arrested here in Nashville recently who was planning to to crash a plane into her concert. Uh, he was arrested here at the Nashville um, airport. Uh, just very odd. But anyway, if you go back to Britney's, uh, she has what would you know we would sort of think of as a handler. Now, who is this guy? Well, the other thing that affidavit talks about is um, how the press corps that's been following her around takes orders from this guy, Sam. Uh, and they treat him, quote, as a general. And when he says, would you, he like has one of the reporters go take uh, Britney Spears away and, uh, um, when the parents come. And there's, a, there's one company that particular, they're called X-17, and they're, uh, they're a paparazzi company, and they're the main ones that are profiting off of Britney. And, and I know that uh, Osama, her ex-boyfriend or boyfriend or whatever, he was actually a photographer with that group. And then he sort of got in there. And I have no idea. And it all seems very soap opera-ish, except the media agrees she's mentally ill in some capacity. And yet what's allowed to go on in the blogs but also in the mainstream media is when is Britney going to die? When will she kill herself? When will she commit suicide? The um, suggestion here everywhere. is that you got these uh, uh, paparazzi and her manager uh, basically co uh, collaborating on an operation to create this spectacle. That's the uh, implication here. But I wonder what, what the purpose like. could be. Um, I don't know. I know that if Britney Spears actually did commit suicide, that would actually uh, be really traumatic. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of her young people. fans, yeah. Um, um, that's a po it's, it's possible that it's just it's just about making that money, but how did they get that control? And uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure, and I'm not sure that the parents are the ones who need to be rescuing her, but that is who has come to the rescue. Uh, so anyway, that's how I got into Britney Spears thing. Is what are we being told here? This whole thing is playing out. It's like a a large version of the sort of Candy Jones, you know. The uh, you know, I think she would put on a wig when she was doing her. Uh, allegedly mind-controlled spy missions back in the 70s, um, and she was a pinup girl when she wasn't doing that. was her, her main personality, and even if the thing is a performance, it's like we're being sent a signal. It's like we're being told, watch this. We're trying to explain to you there's something going on on the surface here, under the surface here, and uh, you, nobody's going to come right out and say it. Uh, and I may be reading too much into it. I'm aware of that, but, but it struck me that in a lot of ways, Britney is sort of representative of people who, young people particularly, who are exploited in this way in much less public ways. It would and seem to be two things. You know, one, a diversion uh, from other news, and then second, yeah. why this kind of diversion? Why this kind of spectacle that could uh, traumatize uh, millions of young girls? Well, um, and, and, and one of the things that in, in Ty's exploration in, the, in his forums uh, at dreamsinweb.com uh, was various uh, uh, connections to uh, Marilyn Manson and his uh, cel uh, his uh, celebrity cult and the ideas behind that that you know pointing out how we we grind up and chew and spit out these these celebrities as our as our religious icons and yet we really just trash them ultimately we're at the top oh, of the hour and here and I wanted to just remind yeah. everybody that you're, that you're listening to psyop radio this is we're about to go into our uh, inaugural second hour here. Yes, this is the big, all-new, expanded PSYOP Radio, two hours long. And uh, I, I wanted to say, if anybody wants to call in with a question of our guest, Ty Brown, or myself, Mac, uh, my, Miles Lewis, and my uh, co-host, Mac White, uh, the phone number is area code 347-996-3510. That's 347-996-3510. I think we actually might have a caller, but they're... Number is blocked, and so I don't know if it's our next guest or another. Oh boy, I get a lot of that sort of thing. Yeah, but um, I, uh, I wanted to thank you, Ty, for everything that you've been doing, especially the white ops. I uh, one of you, 
one of the, the posts that you have right now at your website, it's not the most recent, but uh, Wide Ops Mission, Keep Britney Spears Alive, and it's got a mandala that was created by one of the forum users at dreamsandweb.com uh, who's communicated with Mac White and myself as well and who uh, has done some really great research. But this, this mandala is really... It's attractive to look at, and, and the meaning behind it I find really inspirational, and I I, I love the idea that you created to uh, propagate that image as a white ops, sort of white magic uh, working to put a hedge of protection, so to speak, around uh, Britney Spears, and also, but, but, but as a symbol for all those exploited people, and ex especially uh, sexually exploited children around the world. Um, I, I reposted the last couple of paragraphs uh, from that on uh, a couple of my websites because I really felt that it, it epitomized the the positivity that uh, you've been putting that you can put behind this research um, and I also wanted to, to, to personally uh, relate um, my Thursday show Precognitive Dissonance with my co-host Craig York last week uh, uh, because that was the homepage uh, my, my website had the, that up. Um, he saw that and he stopped and looked at it. And I started to turn away and put it on a different page. And he's like, "No, no, let me read that." And he he read uh, what you'd written and and looked at the Madonna and, and he you know described on air how um, he at once was you know stricken between two different polarities of, of feeling about the whole thing, um, but that he ultimately was really. Uh, impressed and inspired with what you had done and what you were saying uh, and that he thought it sounded like it came from a perspective of the utmost um, honor and good intent and I, I was just really struck by wow that's that was so great to get that kind of spontaneous outpouring of uh, nice feelings from him about what you've done with that work and also uh, my girlfriend um, you know she can be pretty jaded and you know she like you or I uh, before this, all this stuff had, you know, not that much good feelings towards the likes of Britney Spears, and uh, it really, you know, gave her a completely different perspective, and she was she was really um, impressed with with how that had affected her. So, I, th I think it's yeah, I don't you, think anyone could be more cynical of, of, about the Britney Spears sort of thing than, than I was and, and still am. I mean, I, you know, obviously anybody listening to your show is going to maybe not be that entranced by the sort of uh, the media spectacle, but um, but I decided that this was a public playing out on a very very public way, something that happens in a much more private way, in a much less uh, public way for all kinds of people. Remember, Britney Spears was was marched in the showbiz at a very young age, nine or ten years old, I guess, and she has never been in control of her destiny. Now I don't know if she suffered any sexual abuse, but I do know that she has been sexualized to perform for all of us um, in our sort of uh, strange uh, culture of uh, sort of sexual repression on the one hand and hypersexualization on the other. So we're all neurotic because we don't, you know, we don't know. Uh, we, we all get out of touch of, with healthy sexuality because we're, we're, we're taking our cues from the mainstream media. And so she was sexualized and she was, at a very young age, and she was put up. One of her uh, early videos was actually directed by a guy who, who made his name in the porn industry um, uh, and put up for our entertainment. She has been used up. She is now at the, she's ancient. She's now 26 years old. She's just way too old, and she, is, she now weighs more than 100 pounds, and that's way too heavy. So uh, they're done with her. We don't have use for her anymore. And so she's disposable. And so we're watching this happen in a very public way. And even though I'm very cynical and I know a lot of people who might read that would be, I decided we don't know those other names of a lot of those other people, but we know her name. And when we sign on to those blogs and we look at the mainstream media and we see people wagering on when she's going to die, we're participating in that. We are putting forward that mental energy. And if nothing else, the, sim the mandala is simply a way of saying, I withdraw my consent. You do not do this with my consent. Um, I don't approve. And you know what? We've had a little bit of success. Probably has nothing to do with what we did, but uh, the day after that went up, uh, some psychologists were quoted saying it's not right for um, mental health professionals to diagnose her on the air. Um, uh, one of the papar uh, uh, paparazzi, not for X-17, but somebody resigned, quit, 
because of it, because of the high-speed chases. Um, so I'm not saying we did that, but I'm saying that people are starting to at least look at that other perspective. Um, it's hard to feel sorry for a multimillionaire. I realize that, and that's <laughs> not really the point. So I'm glad people are getting it. 